Hey everybody. Hey, if you want to support the show, more importantly, if you want to help Rob support his coffee habit, shopsketchcraft.com is where you go. Now you might be asking yourself, what do I find at shopsketchcraft.com? Uh, you find prints. When I have them in stock. Sometimes you find t-shirts. Sometimes you find commission slots. It changes. It changes. Much like my uh, my work schedule. Much like uh, my sleeping habits. Much like my love or hate for Brandon. It's a day-to-day -day thing. Sometimes hour to hour. So support the show at shopscatchcraft.com. And if you'd have no money, if you're poor, much like myself, which is why I have shopscatchcraft.com, uh, all you have to do is like this video and leave a comment below. And that gets YouTube to pay me internet dollars. And it's a lot of internet dollars to get a cup of coffee. But every little bit helps, folks. Every little bit helps. So like, comment, or shopsketchcraft.com. That's how you support the show. Let's get to work. Trying to load the chat room, but the computer does not want to work. Um, trying to get that open, but there's there's some kind of delay. <laughs> it's, it's pretty pretty hilarious. Pretty hilarious. What's up, everybody? So just give me a second. I will get this running eventually. Luckily, I stream. Uh, on a separate computer. So, when one goes up, the other works. And that's just kind of what it's doing. I like when you can hear the computer making popcorn. You can hear it in there thinking. But it's not doing anything. It's impressive. Impressive. Well, eventually, things will work on that computer. In the meantime, Nothing works on that computer. That's crazy. Well, in the meantime, it's good to work. So, uh, I can't see the chat room. So, I will attempt to do this without looking. And in the meantime, let's see if I can adjust the white balance a little bit here. So, it's not doing that halo thing. Sort of, 420. That's closer. Uh, thank you, computer, for not thinking. All right. Brandon is busy playing on Twitch, so he will eventually show up to the stream. So um, where did I leave off? So I haven't touched this in about a month. Uh, I had to go and do my final work on Spyro. So, that required a tremendous amount of effort. And when I say a tremendous, it just took, it took a lot. It took a lot to get everything done. Um, it's all done now. So, I get my normal life back. So, we'll have some consistency to streaming here for a little bit. Which is nice. Which is nice.
It's always great when you leave Firefox open on a, another computer and it decides to just like pillage the memory, you know? Oh, so stupid. At some point it would be faster to just turn the computer off and start over. So. Okay. And the amount of time that's taken. In the meantime, I have to wrap this thing up and then get on with the knuckles so we can do something more entertaining. But while that reboots, I'm going to just try to remember what the hell I was doing with this. I'm pretty certain the colors I was using were more of these terracottas. Pretty certain. So... I just have to come here and do this boring ass grunt work to get this done. Kyle joined in. What's up, Kyle? Yo, how's, how's it going? I got you on the stream. Yeah, it's going good. I can't see the chat room because my other computer just decided to... Firefox decided to eat up all the memory. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I'm, like, I'm sitting there, click on it, nothing wants to... Re you ever do that? You just click on it, just decided to fart on you? And you're like, oh, no. So, no. yeah, sometimes it happens. So, that so you got... Uh Luke Lawrence in there. He's asking what's up. Uh, Animation Sensation says hello. Hello. And Akuma813 says, when it comes to using colored pencils, you're definitely one of the best. Oh, thank you so much. And remember, we're not doing this looking at a bunch of photos, right? This is all from our imaginations, right? Much like uh, Brandon's fame. It's all in your <laughs> head, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> you guys are in luck, Kyle. Huh? You've been you've been gone for about a month too, man. You've been busy. Out yeah, there, it's been nonstop work out there filming Mission Impossible Seven. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, nothing quite that ambitious. Uh, hopefully soon, man. I want my golf cart. I want <laughs> for those that don't know, Kyle. Kyle does uh, you do camera stuff, right? Out there in LA, like cinematography, all that kind of thing. Usually, yeah. yeah. Right now I'm working on a documentary that I directed. Oh, nice. And see, he's working his way up to director status. And I've told Kyle, uh, when he becomes a director on a real production, I get to be the guy that drives him around in the golf cart. <laughs> that's, that's what I want. It's my dream, Kyle. Like You may think I was joking, but <laughs> it really is my dream. So One day... One, one day. day. One day. Hey, you know, my odds are getting better every year. <laughs> yeah. You may not like the production, but I'll be there to help you. you know? Excellent. <laughs> so Armando is asking, uh, I, I guess he's more stating that you liked Mission Impossible Fallout, it appears. Yeah, I like all the Mission Impossible movies for varying reasons, but mostly, like, especially with these, the, you know, since the JJ run, uh, I really enjoyed the production. Like when JJ came on board, he really brought a lot of like TV techniques to getting that production done. And it really interested me. Like that whole bridge sequence that's like right out of the True Lies was filmed out in LA, you know, with green screen and set and stuff. And they did a good job. And then on the fourth one, you know, they stepped it up with this, the stunts, you know, the stunt work. And just listening to Chris McQuarrie 
talk about the production, uh, especially on the latest episode of the Q&A. Um, he was the writer and director of the last two, and he did uncredited writing on uh, Ghost Protocol. Ah, I did not know that. Yeah, and Chris McQuarrie got his start. Uh, you know, Usual Suspects. He actually wrote the scene in the first X-Men movie where Magneto's in that prison camp. That came from Chris McQuarrie. Um, so, I'm just a big fan of his, you know? And you want to talk about nightmare scenarios, you got to listen to those production stories. Like, those are hard fucking... Those might be the hardest movies to make in Hollywood right now. Those Mission Impossible films, Kyle. So, uh, I highly recommend... I tried to go get out to L.A. for that because he's usually at the film school. You know, the, the ones that Kyle... Yeah. Remember they go to the art school? The film school in L.A., but just with this wedding I got to go to this month uh, wasn't possible to, to do that. Joseph Walker says, Rob, man, you put blood, sweat, and tears in every piece. Your talent can't be duplicated. Uh, probably for good reason. It's not financially viable. Like, <laughs> 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 this is not the way to make money, you know? I'm not even going to say it's the way to make fame. But, you know, it is a way to make good art if you just stick with it, you know? So, I'm happy with the piece and everything. Yeah, uh, Akuma says, you've got a distinct style, and you can definitely tell your art apart from the rest. Oh, thank you. And then Luke comes back with you and Creature Box are probably my three favorite artists. Wow, that's a big compliment. Yeah. I remember when they first formed the Creature Box label. I'd been following... Uh, I always want to call him Dave Rubin. That's the, Dave Rubin's that political guy I don't like. But, uh, Dave, the main guy, the art director over at Insomniac. I was a fan of Insomniac stuff. And When they first started the Creature Box label, I was just doing... Uh, development on Death Junior, uh, the, the graphic novel that was going to become the next Death Junior game for play, and I was like, we need this vibe. It needs to have this old look with the monsters, and like, that's what I do. And he's like, why do you want it to look old? It needs to look new. And I'm like, no, look old. Like these games are getting older. These platforming games, and so it's, uh, it's always a compliment to. But you know, it it too. It's nice to know that. You know, not sitting here just recreating what they do, right? You want to yeah. hit that vibe, but you don't want to be like, I just made it like they, I just remake their art and put my name on it. So, so Armando thinks that the Mission Impossible plots could be better. He says uh, they may be leaning too much on the Fast and Furious levels of conflict. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, Armando, you really should go listen to the Q and A with Chris McQuarrie before you start forming opinions on plots and tropes <laughs> and writing of those films. You, you, I don't think he fully understands the complexities of of the production of those films and how good a writer Chris McQuarrie is. I, I, really... I kind of have to take Armando's side. I, okay, like, well, you should I, go I, listen I, to the Q&A. <laughs> no. I, I really enjoyed this last one. I felt like it was... From a technical level, like it's hard to top Mission Impossible Fallout. From a r story standpoint, it it was a really good example of kind of a action chase movie. I didn't feel a whole lot of character development. I really think you guys should go listen to Q. Why don't you guys go have... I'll have this conversation with you, willingly, with all of you. We'll have it. And I'll concede points if you guys get me. But I, I think in order for us to have this conversation, we all have to be on the same playing field. Right? And I am I just don't feel that's the case here. So Can we at least agree that Henry Cavill, not a great actor? Huh? What's new about that? <laughs> He, Look, he's, he felt so out of place in this movie. He's not out of place, just he he's he doesn't add more than a wink and a nod to the camera. He, in any film he's ever done, you know? And look, for Superman, you can get away with it. I, I kind of go back to... Uh, so, Kyle, you're a big fan of the Bruce Timm 1992 animated series, right? The Batman. Yeah, Batman. Right? Lots of complex characters, writing, pretty impressive. Not just for the day, but for any day in 
you know, modern American animation. And then they launched The Adventures of Superman, which I was super excited for because I'm like, oh, these guys are going to put this level of stuff to Superman. And although Luther, they added things like Luther with Mercy and there was some interesting stuff, the character of Superman was just really, what's the word I'm thinking of? Placid. Like he's just surface <laughs> level. He didn't add anything. There was no character to him. He's like, okay, Luther. All right, Luther. Ah, Luther. You know? Like, there wasn't anything there. Compared to even, say, at the time, there was a live-action show, The uh, Adventures of Super Lois and Clark, and Dean Cain was playing Superman. He was at least trying to bring something to that character, you know? And I feel like Henry Cavill is, like, very similar in that respect. Like, he just, he does very good at, like, looking at you, giving that, like, in the, like, in um Man of Steel, you know, when he pulls those chains, that shackles off him, and he's good at giving you those looks, but when it comes to delivering drama, he's just, like Gal Gadot, you know, like, they're very, you know, they, they get the job done, but if you're looking for him to <clears throat> bring some level of villainy to that role, but that kind of wasn't the point. I almost put marketing on that, like, marketing made that a bigger deal um, than what the film was offering with him. But again, again, we're I'm I'm having this conversation with you guys, having listened to Chris McQuarrie talk about this for two hours, and I've listened to that. <sighs> See, Kyle, I've taken you to those film center things, and yeah, they talk, but McQuarrie's the best. Yeah. So only Aaron Sorkin gets close to being pretty open about every part of that process. So. But yeah, I mean, if they had cast a, a Carl Urban or, you know, someone in that role, then there would have been more there, you know. But there wasn't. So, uh, Joseph Walker, Nakuma, are saying that uh, you're a big influence on them artistically because you're you kind of help them concentrate on focusing on the basics of drawing and rather than doing all the fun stuff first <laughs> and that they learned like construction through your videos and oh, perspective. Awesome. So they said, thanks for those videos. I uh, appreciate that. Appreciate you taking the time to say thank you. Really do. I mean, like that's, that's the one thing I'm trying to like really have an effect on, you know, like, if you get the construction down, you can do any style you want. It's just, it's kind of like, you know, when you have the 3D models on a game, you can add different shaders and art, you know, styles to that look. But if you don't have the, the basics down, then it's, you're just, you're just dressing nonsense. If that makes any sense. It's like window dressing, like really. You ever go to a restaurant and they're trying to be more than they can be? You know, like, <laughs> like they just don't have the ability to pull off the tiki look, but they're really trying, even though they're like next to a little Caesars and, you know, they yeah. got maybe 300 square feet, you know. That should, that should be the new U.S. Army slogan, be more than you can be. Work within the box. <laughs> so I'm sure you already saw the news, but. One Punch Man Season 2? Yeah, I'm a little nervous, though, because the animation house that's taken that over are the guys that do Food Wars. Now, I love Food Wars. I really do. But they're not Madhouse. They're, anima they're not really known. They're known for humor. Like, they can do humor and limited animation really well. But over-the-top wild fights? I don't know. Um, then again, on One Punch Man, those fights got done because the, the director went and found a bunch of independent animators and they all animated the different fight scenes. So if they're continuing that through, then there you go. You know, The fact that it's coming out later than sooner makes me feel better that they'll, they'll yeah. continue that. I was reading that Madhouse generally doesn't do second seasons or sequels. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that it? There's, yeah, uh, apparently there's one show that they actually did season two or whatever of, but besides that, they 
normally do a season one, then they hand it off to another studio. From what I was reading, I don't know too much about the. What's the? I wonder what the business plan for that is. You know, we love to make hits, and then we stop making them, <laughs> and we move on to something else. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess if you're in demand and have enough potential new properties lined up to keep you busy, I suppose that could be your thing. Hmm. Interesting. See, Kyle, I did not know that. I'm just passing off what I read in the uh, comments. So, who knows? The key art looked fine, you know, but it's key art, so I don't know. You know. I'm looking forward to that more than I am, you know, if they announce a Superman movie tomorrow. Now, if they announce a Superman movie tomorrow and Chris McQuarrie was directing and writing it, I'd be more interested. But One Punch Man is awesome. a little tricky with these elements that get near the edge of the page and you're like, oh, they got to line up. It also gets tricky when you're like, I don't know how I did this last time. <laughs> and I didn't bother sitting down watching the videos before I started, so it'll all make sense in a minute. Luckily, this is why I keep all the color pencils together. So I'm like, well, I know I use just these. So it's some combination. <laughs> So the goal here is to work on this for about 90 minutes or so. Then I'll take a break and then come back and work on Darksiders. And we'll be doing that during the day throughout the week. Uh, Monday through Thursday. Fridays are my day off days. By day off, I mean my wife keeps scheduling errands to be run on Fridays. So there's just no point. <laughs> And trying to work or fight that battle anymore. Yeah. Armando is asking if you've seen Annabelle Creation. Nah, I'm not. And he's way more into horror movies than I am. Yeah, I'm not really a horror person either. Yeah. Rarely see horror films. I'll probably watch The Quiet Place, you know, because I know it's. I heard it's really good, but I gotta watch. I can't go to a theater where no one. Look, it get the worst part in movie theaters these days is when it gets quiet and people decide to open their fucking Twizzlers wrapper. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, hey, Luke. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks, Luke. Just gonna go grab some dinner. Yeah, I don't understand. With all this, we can send a car into space, but we can't make candy wrappers that are silent for no, movie theaters. we can't send a car into space. Elon Musk can. <laughs> we, we, yeah. we, can't, we can't make certain elderly people have access to healthcare. That's what we can't do. <laughs> Elon Musk could probably solve both problems if he gave a shit, but he's more interested in putting cars in his face. Cause, you know. I'll have to tweet Elon Musk and ask if he'll make silent Twizzlers wrappers for movie theaters. <laughs> Someone needs to do that. Twizzler straws. We can use those straw paper wrappers just for Twizzlers. We can just unsheath the Twizzlers. Did you ever watch Mr. Bean? Oh, yeah. I've seen all of them. Uh, just whenever I hear people opening wrappers in movie theaters, I think about the <laughs> episode where he's in the church trying to unwrap his little candies. Yeah. My favorite is when he goes to the... It's the Christmas episode. It's one long series, so it starts with him trying to like get undressed while driving the car. And then he gets to the store to buy 
because he wants to buy a new chair and then he gets there and he's playing with the nativity scene he does a little <laughs> the camera zooms in on the nativity scene and he's doing like you know with the jesus and then a dinosaur comes in you know he brings in a helicopter and he gets chastised and then it ends with the turkey he's making a turkey dinner for his girlfriend and he gets her shitty gifts you know like she gets some awesome gifts he gets her shitty gifts and he gets a turkey stuck on his head i mean they stole the joke for friends like they put the exact same turkey gag into friends today didn't they use that turkey gag in the mr bean movie yeah they reused it but i mean he you know they had that they had a similar thing to the groundlings like some you know comedy troupe thing that he was a part of where the bean character came from similar to like how Pee Wee herman was like a sort of like a night night show it was like a stage act mm-hmm. for adults and then he turned all those gags into the show which is why the show only has so many episodes and then yeah they repurpose a lot of the jokes for the movie so, pointless to watch those movies if you've seen the show yeah show is definitely funnier yeah Last episode, I think it ends with a girlfriend dumping him. Like, it's great. From beginning to end, it's, it's perfect. I think he put more thought into getting his teddy bear Christmas present than his girlfriend. <laughs> Akuma says, Ash vs. Evil Dead did a similar gag with a cadaver. It was spectacular. Yeah, getting shit stuck on people's heads is always funny. I think my favorite Ash vs. Evil Dead moment was when they did puppet version of Ash. Oh, puppets are He's equally fighting, always funny. Yeah, Fighting an evil puppet of himself. That was my favorite part. Yeah, I wish... Joss would come back and do a Buffy reunion, but they're all puppets. Armando was asking if you're aware about the little controversy going on about Spyro. Uh, I'm not going to talk about anything, guys. I don't. I don't you, can, you can go talk about that on Twitter. I can't get involved in anything. Next subject. Next subject. Uh, next subject. Movie pass. <laughs> so terrible. Hey man, I I I don't I don't own a movie pass, but Kyle does. So you want to talk about that? Like, <laughs> how's it been well, for you? I went to cancel it on the ninth because they bill me on the tenth, and apparently they bill on Eastern Standard Time. So I got billed for another month. So I'm stuck with this garbage service for another month. I like how they're like, well, it could change. Then it couldn't. We don't know. Like, <laughs> Yeah, they change it like every month. Or not every month. Like every two weeks they change what they're doing. And so far since they renewed my subscription a few days ago, I've had the option of seeing Slender Man or Slender Man. <laughs> you didn't I see that coming yes. with the Death Wish fiasco, though. Like, well, no, I, I saw it coming. That's why I went to cancel the on the at the end of the ninth, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, they had billed me on Eastern Standard Time. So they're like, "Oh, it's the tenth somewhere in the world. Let's bill Kyle right now." <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't taken to suing. Uh, YouTubers who complain about their service for defamation or some nonsense, you know? Not I'm like yeah, not not yet. I'm sure <laughs> it'll happen soon enough. <laughs> I'm just like I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. As they figure out ways to stop losing money, they're like, you know what? The best way to do it is make our service so bad everyone just leaves, then we won't be losing money. I think 
and I'm being serious here, as crazy as it sounds, I think they should hire Yui Bowl to be their new president. And then he can just box <laughs> anyone who fucking complains about movie, <laughs> movie pass. I, like, I would keep my service to right. that. <laughs> Any of our members who want to complain, he's willing to box them. You know, and then they could just go there and he could show up and, you know, they could stream it. Armando asks, what is this, a live stream slash podcast hybrid? Armando asks, it's how it uh, always is, man. Yeah, it was more just a live stream. And since Rob's chat wasn't working, I hopped on here so I could read the comments to him. He's always got questions. And since I'm here, yeah. we're going to talk about stuff. Cause... Like Armando's next subject, Sony looks like they're going to screw up Venom. Agreed. <laughs> looks like. like I'm trying to figure out. Uh, guys, I've been saying this since the day that movie was announced. Tim Rothman. I think that's his name. Tom Rothman or Tim. I can never remember. The former head of Fox is in charge of Sony now since Amy, Amy Pascal had to step down due to the whole North Korean thing. Um, if you wonder why this film looks like a 2003 era Marvel movie, it's because the guy who was in charge of all those 2003 era Marvel movies is <laughs> in charge of Sony. That's why. Rothman's the guy... Who 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 fought against Sentinels being in X Men Two? Because quote unquote giant robots are fucking stupid. You know this is the guy they had to eventually kick out of Fox for a lot of reasons, and so but you know in Hollywood people fail upwards, yeah. so he'll, they're like oh but it's going to be rated R Rob it's going to be rated R like Logan I'm like if you really think. That Venom is going to be on the level of Logan. Look at how many failed Wolverine movies it took to get to the point where, you know, the the lead actor and the director said, we will take zero money to make something happen with this, you know? Like, that is not what they were trying to They weren't universe building with Logan. They were trying to find a way out of all that. And the only way he was willing to come back was if he made this move, that movie... And the only way they were willing to make it is if they took basically no money to do it. That's how it happened. Hmm. This really looks a lot like, I mean, the way it sounds like every time is like a Warner Brothers DC film, right? Where <laughs> just it keeps changing, you know? Like, we yeah. got all these films coming out. We're going to announce all these films, and they're not making them. And now it's going to be PG-13. And the trailer was... I, every time that trailer plays, man, I keep waiting for... Let the bodies hit the flow. Let the body. I keep waiting for... <laughs> you know? And look, if you're excited for it, I, good, go. Have fun. I, I will not be sitting through. I sat through Daredevil and those Fantastic Four movies. And God almighty, I had to sit through Electra. Learn your lesson. Electra. Who? Oh, later, Akuma. Enjoy your baked chicken. Not a baked chicken, no. He might be back later, though. I don't know. I'll be on. And yeah. Joseph Walker was wondering, Rob, if mm -hmm. there was one video game turned movie you could direct, what would it be besides Pokemon? <laughs> I would be Pokemon. Like, I already said this. Uh, Psychonauts. And I would rather produce than direct. I'm not a, I have never directed anything, so I would not want to be that guy. But I would love to get... If I had an unlimited budget and I could put... I would do a stop motion Leica produced uh, Psychonauts movie. Psychic Summer Camp, guys. It's fucking amazing. Like, it just would be perfect in stop motion. And if I couldn't get that done, if they said, nope, has to be live action, then I would do a YouTube series. I'd want to be part of a YouTube series for Uncharted with Nathan Villian. I would not want that as a movie. I'd want a YouTube series. So it can be a little goofy. Like that thing he did. I just look at Psychonauts screen grabs. That, that definitely would be a like a Oh yeah, the writing's amazing. Totally How, fits their world. If, if you want to sit through a fun, fun story, you know, play that mm -hmm. game. 
find the time. It's super cheap. You can get it for like five bucks. Basically anywhere on PC, wherever. And yes, I did back the sequel on Fig. Nope. I tell you what, man, color pencil and controller cables is not fun. I'd also like to see a <clears throat> YouTube series on the King of Kong with Nathan Fillion playing Billy Mitchell and Andrew Tudyk playing Steve Weeby. <laughs> I think that would be that perfect. Would be pretty great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could just see him putting Nathan Fillion in a mullet and a beard, and just him shitting on a fucking Weeby would just be, <laughs> or uh, Tudyk would just be amazing. So I see Mark Hamill is joining a TV show. Which one? Nightfall. Hmm. It's, uh, plays a battle-hardened Knight, Knight Templar veteran of the Crusades. <laughs> Who goes to hide out on the island where the Knights Templars were first formed. <laughs> Forsakes the Order of Solomon. Yes. Fights the evil chancellor who's trying to eradicate the Knights Templar. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, well, it's right up his alley. It's one of the few movies where I do agree the director's cut's a vastly different film. Is uh, Kingdom of Heaven. I don't think I ever watched that. Yeah, that's one of the ones where I'm like, they really should never have edited this film down. Like, it's a vastly different movie. Like, there's no edit that can save Alien Covenant, you know? But Kingdom of Heaven's another story. I mean, you still have to buy all those guys, you know? Middle Eastern, I suppose, but you get past that. <laughs> if I can watch Valkyrie, I can get past it, you know? Armando asks if any, anybody wants to talk about Emu Paradise. Do you know what that is? Uh, yeah, so that's a site that hosted, uh, they've hosted ROMs and stuff for years. Um, strategy guides, too, man. And so Nintendo's cracked down on some other ROM sites, and then Emo Paradise didn't want to deal with it, so they shut their some, themselves down before there could be an issue. Uh. And this goes all into like game preservation. Like it's kind of a problem because. So, are you aware of a game called Windjammers? I've heard the title. So it was a game that came out in the '90s on Neo Geo platform. It was like a. Kind of like Street Fighter with Frisbee. Kind of a top-down competitive Frisbee game. It's Pong on steroids, bro. And the emulation scene, 
over the last few years just really took off with this and to the point where they finally re-released Windjammers like officially so people could buy it and it's a big game people buy it and it's, it's amazing but that would only happen because of the emulation scene you can't buy that game anywhere like you couldn't before then you know and this this goes on and on and on like point and click adventure games all sorts of older games that they just ditch you know, are only available through emulation unless you pay tons of money. Like, if I want to get a copy of... There's certain games, man, that get copies of, they're going to cost you 500 bucks on eBay. Like, how is that helping Nintendo? You know? Yeah, they, they never see a dollar of that money. Is... Right. So, you know, like, <laughs> like, the highest selling game console this year is the NES Classic. You know that? Yeah. And it's like, well, how is that possible if all their games are available for download right now off ROM sites? Well, because people generally like to support... First, emulation's a pain in the ass to set up. You know what I mean? Like, it's not fucking easy. And they don't always work, right? But, you know, like, it gets people acclimated to wanting to support things when they're available for real. You know? So, if it's like saying piracy hurts the ga- the movie industry when you know they they came out with that big push in two thousand nine, I was like, well, the highest, the most pirated movie was Avatar, and the most highest grossing film was Avatar. How does that work? You know, and it's like, well, people generally pirate it, and then when it comes out, they they pay it. Like, oh, not all the time. I'm like, do more often than not. Like, like no no offense. I, I, this is just a weird, stupid conversation to have because they go, oh, you support breaking the law. And it's like, no, I support preservation because, okay, let's take it to movies. Do you know that the German government destroyed almost every copy except one um, because they were of, of, of copyright issues um, of Nosferatu in the 30s? Because the, the Bram Stoker estate, you know, was like, they didn't pay for the license, you got to destroy that movie. So they went and destroyed every copy of Nosferatu except for one, which was brought over here because the copyright, whatever, didn't, you know, fell out of uh, holding in these states and so they could play here. So we only have that copy of Nosferatu because because of piracy. (laughs) You know? And it's like there needs to be a better job made of archiving these games because they're going to go away. Um, a more recent set of games. you ever play the Silent Hill games, Kyle? No. Do you know what they are? They're horror games. They're horror games. Yeah. Silent, yeah so you remember they, the, movie. the, the movies. No, the snot. You know. But the games are amazing. <laughs> well, Konami lost the original ROM masters for those games. They don't even have the code. The only way those games exist in their form is through emulation. Funny part was Nintendo put out uh, Super Mario Brothers on the Wii Store, the Wii U Store. I can't remember. It was like the Wii U Store years ago when they were first putting up like the NES Classics games. They put up Super Mario Brothers, and people did like it was Mario or Zelda. Don't quote me. It was one of those ones, but they put up a Nintendo game. I believe it was Super Mario Brothers. And they looked at it and found that it was the actual ROM. They just, they, from the, the pirated ROM, it wasn't even their own source code. And they own every fucking game there is. But they had put up a ROM. Because inside the metadata of the game was the URL to Emu Paradise. <laughs> That's great. Right. <laughs> and I'm dumb enough to fucking memorize all this stupid shit, you know? But how many kids now would have got... Nintendo is pirating their own games. Yeah, they pirated their own games. So ridiculous. So. One will fall and 700 others will rise at the ashes of Emu Paradise. Mirror sides, copies of sides, and everything else. So, whatever. But it, it 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 is a shame, you know. I 
Look, I'm, I've said many times I'm not the biggest fan of ROMs because they don't play the way they, they actually played, you know? There's just, mm-hmm. They're just not perfect. But they're a great way to get people onto retro gaming that don't have access or, you know, money. or, And then they'll get into games later. Because there's so many older games that are awesome that, I mean, I can't go on right now and buy Blast Core, you know? Like, there's games that I grew up with, and I'm like, oh, it'd be really awesome to get, uh, let me think of it, like Shining Force 1 through 3. You can't get Shining Force, Shining Force 3, sorry, 1 through th- one and 2 are on mobile and everything, but Shining Force 3 was on Sega Saturn, but that game was split into three parts in Japan. They were trying to do this episodic gaming thing at the time, you know? And they only released the first part of a three-part game here and charged full price for it, and it never went anywhere. So there's two other parts of that game that you can't get here. You can only do through emulation this year because people took 10 years to... to they started in 2007 and it finally came out last year. They uh, to, to translate the game into English. Brandon finally showed up. Brandon there. Uh, Hello, I don't see him in the comments yet. Uh, Kyle can't hear. You can't hear, right, Kyle? No. Brandon, you're going to have to call me on the Skype. Okay. He, he calls Joseph him Walker too. says he just got Gunstar Heroes the other day. Awesome. Great game. What about Silent Mirage? Or a Silhouette Mirage? Like, there's a great series. Where can we buy that game? You know? I mean, this thing sync recently. Did you ever play the Scott Pilgrim versus the World game, Kyle? No. They made it. Uh, it's a side-scrolling beat 'em up, like River City Ransom or Final Fight. If you remember those games, like all pixels, really, really well done. And it's only available on the PlayStation Three store. <laughs> you know, because the licensing. So even though I own that game, I can't play it because I have to load up my stupid PS3. Let's see if I can add. Do you have Brandon logged into your thing? Let me... Let me see. Oh, wait, I can add him. Let me try there. Call him. Oh, yeah, I see a current call with him. All right. Hello, everybody. There you go. Skype changed the interface. So I gotta. Ah. Hey, Brandon. Hello. If you got Kyle on, why you need me? All Kyle's right. way more. Inter- Kyle's way more entertaining than. Kyle me. took the initiative on his own. I didn't even invite him. Unlike you, Brandon. I'm going to have to call um, and remind you. <laughs> you want to talk some shit? Let's talk some shit. Well, that's because that's <laughs> Kyle doesn't talk to you, you know, six times during the day. So uh, uh, He does. We talk back and forth. Right, Kyle? You're just busy working. Yeah. Because Kyle has a job, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a game of uh, stupid chess. Yes. Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> How was your mm-hmm. Twitch streaming? It was good. I uh, played Madden 1, of course. And then I uh, switched to uh, Walking Dead Season 2 of Telltale Games. And had a couple people watching that, so that was good. Um, just trying to mix it up, make sure I play different things. And, uh, you know, go from Overwatch to Fortnite to Madden to some of the games that I have that I haven't played. Like uh, The Walking Dead, so... Pretty sure everybody just comes to see Gamora, which is fine. You know, I'm just the secondary act. So, she's far more entertaining than I am. How's your Fortnite playing going? Uh, I haven't played it since last week, but it's fun. I mean, it's not my favorite game, but I'll play it, you know. It's whatnot. Um... I'm more of a uh, Rainbow Six Siege type person with the more realistic uh, first-person shooters. 
uh, than the goofy, you know, run around just randomly shooting bomb stuff. So even when I play first person shooters, I prefer the strategic route instead of the running gun. Just, hey, maybe I'll get lucky if I throw a grenade this way type thing. So when I play like Rainbow Six, I play uh, ranked. So there's friendly fire. So you get you can get booted from the game and banned for like 30 minutes if you kill your teammates. So I like that a little bit more, but I'll try it all. I'm a video game sleut. What's a sleut? Yeah, uh, I didn't want to say slut. Uh, I didn't want to call myself a video game slut, so I called myself a video game sleut. But now you made me explain it, so hmm. there you go. Hmm. I'm open to different video games, different styles. <laughs> Much like your sexual preference. Hell yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I love cake, I love pie, and I don't discriminate. They're both delicious. Exactly. Though neither one is cheesecake. Oh, fuck. Now you're talking my language, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, make a good low-carb pumpkin cheesecake. What's something you don't make good? Because I haven't heard you say like you mess something up in a while. What's something that you make and it's just not right? Like it just tastes bad and you haven't mastered it yet. That's what I want to hear. Has that happened? Like you try to make something low carb and it just turned out horrible? Has that happened yet? Uh, the only thing you kind of can't do because you need giant vats of it in order to make it work is uh, syrup. It crystallizes. And so in order to make syrup work, you need kind of agave syrups and stuff, but it doesn't. So I can still do it, but I need to get like pure agave to kind of make that happen. But not really. See, the thing, Brandon, is is I understand the components before I start cooking. Uh, so if I like, have a recipe like art. and it calls for galandrol, and I don't understand what galandrol is, I go I've and never get heard that word before. Uh, I know. And so <laughs> I have to go, I do a lot of research before I make a recipe, you know, and I understand the properties and I get the individual ingredients and taste them. And the reason why is when you're cooking, if you have to adjust and you don't know the properties of what you're using, it's called the fundamentals, Brandon, like much like construction. And <laughs> you I don't know? know what that is. Is yeah. there sugar in Glen Gliggle? No, it's like ginger. It's Nine. a harder version well, it's in a lot like of it. thai food if you've had it you've had thai food before i do not like thai food sir right. well you're a man of simple tastes mountain dew tacos yeah, very basic so i like to run the gamut i like to drink mountain dew with my thai food <laughs> i've seen him go. do it i've seen he's not joking so i like to drink mountain dew with my mountain dew so Double up. I'm I do I'm extreme. I like Armando to says hi, hello, Brandon. Hey Armando. Hey tell have, tell Armando have, about yeah, your Twitch channel. Armando, you could find me on Twitch at Mega Potato Show. And you can watch me play all kind of games. Madden, Rainbow Six, Fortnite, Overwatch. We gotta have you play Dead. Freddy Got not Freddy Got Fingered. Five Nights of Freddy or whatever. You can play those games. Get all I, I'll try it all. I'll play it at night. I'll maybe light some candles. Set the atmosphere so it's real creepy. Maybe yeah, not. Rob, hmm? uh, I say Rob's chat window is broken, so I've been reading the comments to him, Brandon. Oh, okay. Yeah, Firefox is still... I don't know. I don't know. It's the other computer sometimes. So, Rob, did you learn all your cooking stuff from watching Food Wars? Nope. Master no. Chef Australia. I learned a lot. Well, no, first off, I grew up with a guy who was used to be a chef. So I learned a lot of basics with him. Uh, chef from South Park doesn't count. <laughs> I know, I know. No, but he did a lot of, you know, he grew up, in a, he's an Italian. His parents were Italian immigrants, so he grew up in an Italian home. And then... He, uh, you know, he worked in a lot of restaurants, and he joined the military around the '60s, during the Vietnam, the late '60s, and then he wasn't a chef, but he was the guy they'd always put in charge of cooking because he could do well. 
So he taught me a lot of the basics when I was a kid, which I had already wanted to know. I was, I've was always had it in me, like, to be really into that sort of thing. Like, I would force, like, I used to be the guy that would, in the fourth grade, I got my fourth grade teacher to start a culinary class, because my father, my, my adoptive father can't cook worth the fucking shit. He just bought a microwave, and we'd just be microwaving dinners all the time, and I couldn't take it. <laughs> couldn't take it. <laughs> couldn't take it. The fourth grade, I'm like, I can't stand this food. God. Uh, kid cuisine, you know, every fucking night. Kid cuisine. You guys remember kid cuisine? It's not good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, but I've had to really, around 2012, I took a started to take a real active interest in learning actually I was saying around two thousand six and seven, you know, when a lot of those cooking shoots kinda came up. But two thousand twelve I started really learning fundamentals just because of uh I have a story that Brandon you know about that I've been working on and I wanted to mm-hmm. understand, you know, the culinary side. And then when I changed my diet over I wanted to also learn how to what the fuck is nutrition? You know, like I know how to make a lot of bad food, but I don't know how to make healthy food too, you know, so. But we all can't have, you know, Kyle's metabolism. So. Armando asks, so is my father right? Are microwaves less than helpful? They're helpful for like, like reheating things. Yeah, yeah they, they have their place, but you can't rely on only a microwave to make all your food. You can't? I mean, you can. Oh, okay, it's not. Good. It's not recommended. Okay. <sighs> it's hard he... to pan sear anything in a microwave. <laughs> but I do make a really good uh, low carb pizza dough in the microwave. But I have to bake it and get done. So. So there's uses for it, but. Yeah. Low heat cooking is still the best, you know. Like your crock pot? Like anything, even on the stove. Just cook it on a low heat. If you're going to make pancakes, put it on a medium, you know, slightly under medium heat and let that pan really get warm over a medium heat or medium to low heat, you know, 10 to 15 minutes before you start so the pan gets evenly heated. A lot of times you're just, whatever you're using is just not evenly uh, heated. So you're going to use, you know, it cooks weird or burnt on one side or raw on the other. But cooking anything longer on for low, even that's why, you know, I'll sear, you know, meat off in, and I have an iron skillet and then I'll sear it and then put it in the oven at 400, 420, give or take the, the meat, you know, for 12, you know, anywhere from six minutes, you know, if it's steaks or, uh, depending on your rarity and then chicken 12 to 18 minutes depending on the cut so or you just get some egos and you put them in the toaster for like 30 seconds and bam done yes you know that's one option just you know just alternatively you can throw them in the microwave i suppose oh no then they get all soft and mushy yeah makes chewing them easier <laughs> just Hello. slurp it right through a straw. <laughs> yeah, I go through a straw. Just put them in a blender with my Mountain Dew. Yep. All right. Sounds about right. No, I never really spent money on my cooking utensils, and then I got a hundred dollar like pan for cooking stuff. Mm-hmm. I love that thing. Yeah, I mean, all you really need is one good Love sauce it. pot, one good pan just for eggs and pancakes, things like that, uh, and then one good uh, aluminum, steel, or iron skillet, whichever one, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, heavy, heavy, heavy pan for searing off meat. And if you have those three things, you're pretty good to go. You can do pretty much whatever you want. So it's not like, but you want to make sure you have decent pans and stuff because it just makes life easier. Agreed. But that's when you get older, you start getting into that shit, you know. Right. You're like, yeah. But I mean, like I was always, it's just, 
Hey, man, it's tough when you're, you know, working full-time, going to college, can never be home. So I had to live off burritos and cans of soup and shit for the longest time. But Burrito soup. Yeah. But sometimes, man, those, like, you know those five for a dollar ones? They come in, like, colored wrappers, the Tina's. <laughs> You get yeah. the green or the cheese, you know, or you just like uh, mush it up in a so bowl gross. with sauce <laughs> and you just, you know, shove a little sour cream in there if you can. It just turns into this mush. Just like your microwave Dagos. Yes. Yes, yes. So Sonic the Hedgehog movie. <laughs> you, uh... If you really want to know how I feel about it, the long yeah. form, uh, I just did a podcast with the Megavisions guys. They got me on their podcast now, and I spent, wait. Like, they're making it. They're making a, a, a Sonic movie. Action, a live action Sonic. Yeah, Jim. A Carrey. live action. Jim Carrey's playing Eggman, and you know, That's Brandon, not... it's it's not. If you look. Look, it's not going to be good. <laughs> I'm just just letting you guys know now. It's not going to turn out well. You know? Or it could. It's not going to turn out well. Come on, man. Jim Carrey's movies have been great lately. Have it's you not got seen... nothing to do with the Jim Carrey thing. It, it, it... Can, I, can I finish my joke? No. Can I finish my joke of um... sarcasm? I was getting to the fact that Jim Carrey hasn't made a good movie in a long time. Could be worse. It could have been like Adam Sandler in it. It's not too late to cast him in one of the roles. Mm, roles. What are you working on, Kyle? Any cool music videos or movies or shows or anything? What are you working on? I'm working on a documentary. Cool. What's it about? It's a short Stan Sakai. Uh, he's the guy who created Usagi Yojimbo. Right. Uh, That's it's, cool. It's, it's a short doc. Like It's looking like it's going to be about 13, 14 minutes. Still cool, though. Yeah. You going to try to pitch it to Netflix to go for an extended? No. Is that the goal? Damn it. Why? Why not? The stands that made us, you could do the show, the stands, and they're all about stands, like Stan Lee, Stan Sakai, Sebastian Stan, Stan Lee Keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> keep, keep it going. See what you can do. Uh, stand by me. Stand by me. <laughs> uh, maybe stand and deliver. Stand in the place where you work, right? There's that song. Yep. The stand, huh? There you go. Didn't really affect me, but that'll be the first show to get like air and canceled on the same day on Netflix. <laughs> they'll be like, they'll get through like thirty minutes of that show like, gets oh, canceled cool. on Netflix. That's that's what I'm saying. That it'd be so once you get to that whole stand by me part, they're like, yeah, it's canceled. We're done. Me. Did you ever Armando see that movie? Go ahead. Armando was asking if Sony was doing the Sonic movie. They are not. It's Paramount. It's the production studio. I don't know if that's any better. From the makers Uh, of Age of Extinction. Look, I'm just telling you, from what I've seen, it, it, you don't get your, you know, we all, look, come on, guys, you know, (laughs) <laughs> it it should be an animated film, you know. Like this is, this is not good. It's like when they make a Pokemon movie, and you're like, oh, is it going to be about the kids and kind of like the Karate Kid and Rocky, but with your pet and tournament? No, it's going to be about a detective Pikachu. Like, okay, fuck that, you know. I'm out, you know. Like, like that's not the movie people were when you say, you know. I mean. I hope it's a modern day Howard the Duck. It's gonna be a modern day <laughs> Mario, you know, like the last. I mean, it's just it's just what year are we in with this? You know, you just keep doing this. I'm 
Like, um, if they were going this route, I mean, they may as well just put a guy in a Sonic outfit, like the Crash yes. Bandicoot commercials, and he's stuck in it and has to run for his life. You know what I mean? Like, Sheriff Robotnik's coming after him. It's like mistaken idea. You know, like, <laughs> right. they make about as much sense as anything else they're doing. So. Yeah, it's not even a bad idea. <laughs> just he's on the run. He's got a Kyle's, run. Yeah. Kyle's got the cameras, right? You just you just you hire maybe some people who don't have work that live on the street. You know, hey man, you put this suit on. This guy over here in this suit's gonna chase you for like twenty minutes around the city. I'm gonna film it. What? Hey, twenty bucks is twenty bucks. All right. And then you just have two in a Sonic suit that's way too small for him running from another guy. The only way this works in live action is like Edgar Wright was in charge of it or something. You know, and it'd be so out there that, you know. But. It would have to look too like the. uh, Well, yeah, Edgar Wright, like Scott Pilgrim movie, or even if like. the And I don't know how to say it, the Wachowski brothers when they did uh, Speed Racer, where it's like so over the top and crazy colors and animation and stuff like where it's got the speed and the, the lines and everything. this is like, going to be right up there with the smurfs movies you know <laughs> he's so he's going to have sonic's going to have human friends and they're just going to be like oh yeah he does james marston's playing a sheriff and tell that he'd be friends oh goodness you see you see what i'm saying maybe his uh, name will you, be tails hmm. you know or I'm miles just, or yeah, some shit you know right, like, Office, you know? officer tails yeah. So when you say it's gonna be like the Smurfs movie, you mean it's gonna be so good it's gonna get three sequels? Well, it also features blue characters, so maybe there's something to that, you know? Yep. Yeah, and the Chipmunks films. I said good. I didn't say whether they'd be financially successful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you know the Transformers movie have proven that. Money and quality just do not equate. Oh. But they assembled quite the writing team for this. They have such credits as, Hey, stop stabbing me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 12 deadly days. What else else have these guys done? James Gunn's first movie was Scooby-Doo. We all gotta start somewhere. <laughs> Dorm days, which days spelled D A Z E, right? Uh huh. I mean, they didn't. They spared no expense on their running team. The Cloverfield paradox. <laughs> uh. All right, everybody. We hit an hour, so I started a little late. I'll be on time tomorrow, three o'clock, uh, and we're gonna wrap this up and move on to to tales. So should be able to finish this tomorrow. Um, Kyle, where can people find your documentary in in a year? Like, <laughs> like how long is this gonna take? It's gonna be out this year, next year. It's I'm gonna be done with it in two weeks. Oh shit! Because I have oh, a delivery date for it. Nice. No. You gonna take it to so, cons, like the New York no. con, or oh damn it! Not at least that's not the plan. Hmm. Oh, those cons. <laughs> when you first said cons, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not, can... not going to France. No, no, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no. The ones with comic book people, not the film thing. We we'll see. I'm not. Come I'm on. Not 100 percent sure. You need to you need to make your money, Kyle. Yeah, well, Kyle's need to make funny money. paying for this, so, you know, like... Um, <laughs> well, when it comes out, I can't wait to watch it. We'll definitely be talking about it. I'll be back on... Uh, I'm supposed to be on in about 15 minutes, but my wife needs to talk about something, so maybe it'll run a little late. Um, but I'll be back on it a bit, and we'll work on Darksiders for about an hour, hour 90 minutes or so. Uh, that's it. That's all I got. That's all I got, folks. Be back on later. Thanks for hanging out, Kyle. Thanks for showing up, Brandon. Yay. Thank you all. Pretty soon. Let's go hit the exit button. Let's see if it works. Bye, everybody. See you on the flip side.
not have that. Delay. Everybody, where they could shop. Where they could shop. It was at the beginning. I, I, I did it at the beginning. We'll make it all the way to the end. Goodbye.